1848, two big questions were on everyone's mind. How did John Jacob Astor, a guy from a regular family in Germany, become so rich and famous in America? And what would happen to his fortune as he lay on his fancy bed in the Astor Mansion, with his son William there too? Today, on Old Money Chronicles, we'll tell you the incredible story of the Astor family, from their simple beginnings to their lasting influence in America. In 1763, a son was born in the rural settlement of Waldorf, which is now a part of modern Baden-Württemberg, Germany, and is situated close to the majestic city of Heidelberg. The infant, named John Jacob Astor, was the youngest descendant of Marie the Magdalena Vomber and the lowly butcher Johann Jacob Astor. John Jacob left his home at the young age of 16 and moved to the busy metropolis of London, where he studied the craft of making musical instruments under the guidance of his uncle. Astor had a solid education in the field of trade as well as fluency in English from our magnificent English capital's magnificence. Astor set out for America in the year 1784, carrying little more than his hopes and a collection of numerous flutes up for sale. He made New York City his new home and established a modest but aspirational fur shop there. The Jay Treaty of 1794, which permitted American trade with Canada, acted as the impetus for the development of the empire that would eventually give rise to America's first old money family. Jacob had amassed a $6 million fortune at the turn of the century, which was staggeringly wealthy for a time, when America was just a few decades old. He ruled as the fur trade's luminary, diversifying his holdings by exchanging furs for Chinese tea and making investments in Manhattan's developing real estate market and rising to prominence in fur trade with China. A thoroughbred named Messenger, who had traveled from England to America in 1788, was also purchased by John Jacob's brother Henry, a horse racing aficionado and fellow German immigrant. All American standard bred horses are descended from this beautiful steed, adding a special chapter to the legacy of the Astor family. Now, Meriwether Lewis passing in 1809 sparked a search for a capable administrator for the region. Astor recognized the chance and put up a risky proposal to control the fur trade and expand it to the Pacific. Wilson Price Hunt, a businessman from St. Louis, was hired by his venture to lead an overland expedition to the Columbia River. Despite the journey's poor judgments, it unintentionally led to important discoveries and laid the way for what is now known as the Oregon Trail. The foundation of Oregon and Washington's American development was created by this project. Because Astor's empire had a monopoly-like grip on the fur trade, it became one of the biggest businesses in the young United States by the 1820s. But by 1834, the legendary Astor had left the business he had founded, in part because of a change in fashion taste that had reduced the need for fur and caused the corporation to disintegrate. However, by then, Astor had already acquired the title of America's very first multimillionaire and the world's richest man. Now, the passing of John Jacob Astor on March 29, 1848, signaled the end of an era. Astor was once the richest individual in America, with a fortune estimated to be worth an astounding $20 million. By comparing Astor's wealth to the gross domestic product of America at the time, we can get an idea of just how enormous this fortune was in modern terms. His net worth is roughly equivalent to a sum of $121 billion in 2023, making him a global competitor with only Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. And John Jacobs' penchant for philanthropy was equally illustrious, dedicating $400,000 from his coffers to the establishment of the Astor Library, the esteemed institution that would later coalesce with the Lenox Library to become the iconic New York Public Library. Now John Jacobs' firstborn son, John Jr., was dogged from birth by a depressing brew of physical and mental problems. As a result, John Jacobs will give him an allowance just sufficient to secure his subsistence in the uncertain years ahead. Therefore, the Astor family's vast riches and the future of their family empire were placed largely on the capable shoulders of William, the second son, setting up the next move on the grand chessboard in favor of old money control. The Astor family would participate in this family-based intrigue game. Hold on a sec before moving forward, make sure you've subscribed to our channel before we delve into the opulent realm of the Astor family's wealth. It's comparable to reserving your own seat in the magnificent ballroom of history. Remember, you can definitely conquer that subscribe button if the Astors could collect money and titles across countries. With each click, join us as we reveal the stories of the world's elite. 
Now, William Backhouse Astor Sr., named for his father's business acquaintance, William Backhouse, would demonstrate throughout his life that he was a capable partner in his successful export business, while prudently investing money in Manhattan's fertile real estate market. William expanded the empire's real estate holdings by building over 700 stores and residences in the expanding New York City, bolstered by his family's already illustrious name in the corporate world. His real estate endeavors in Central Park resulted in an exponential increase in the family's wealth. Understand that William, a shrewd businessman in his own right, not only managed to protect, but also increase the Astor family fortune. His tireless efforts brought their family even greater fortune, and the culmination of his legacy was an incredible estate with a value of close to $50 million. The following Astors used this gift with exquisite precision, as if Midas himself had given them his golden touch. However, throughout the lengthy story of his family, William made the most significant decision by strategically intermarrying, which is a hallmark of old money dynasties. He took Miss Margaret leader Rebecca Armstrong's hand on May 20, 1818. She was the sister of Horatio Gates Armstrong and the daughter of Senator John Armstrong Jr. and Alita. She claimed descent from the illustrious Livingston clan on her mother's side. Her own mother was the eldest child of famed judge Robert Livingston and his wife Margaret. Her family tree also featured notable figures like Secretary of State Edward Livingston and founding father Robert R. Livingston. On the other hand, her father, John Armstrong Jr., was the esteemed second Secretary of War under President James Madison. William and Margaret's descendants would include a stunningly impressive third generation of Astors to rule their vast empire from this amazing brood. John Jacob Astor III was born on June 10, 1822. He became a successful American financier, a generous benefactor, and a soldier in the American Civil War. Like his father and grandfather, he grew his personal fortune significantly, eventually becoming the wealthiest of the Astor family in his generation. By the end of his life, he had amassed a fortune estimated to be between $75 million and $100 million, which would be equivalent to around $2.5 to $3.5 billion in today's money. Keep in mind that this was during a time when the U.S. had a much smaller economy, so his wealth would be comparable to $80 or $90 billion today. John III's most significant accomplishment was establishing the English branch of the Astor dynasty, which solidified the Astor name's prestige among the British nobility, a legacy that still holds a special place in aristocratic circles today. Moving on to William and Margaret's daughter, Laura Eugenia Astor, who was born in 1824. She married Franklin Hughes Delano on September 17, 1844. This marriage connected the Astors with another prominent American family, the Roosevelts, as Franklin Hughes Delano was named after U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This union also strengthened the Astors' ties to America's early settlers, as Franklin Hughes Delano's ancestry traced back to Philip Delano, a pilgrim who arrived in Plymouth, Massachusetts, in 1621. Now let's focus on William Astor Jr., who carried forward his family's prestigious American legacy. However, it was actually his wife, Caroline Shermerhorn, who played a significant role in shaping New York's elite and high society. Caroline, born on September 22, 1830, came from a privileged background in New York's Dutch aristocracy. Her father, Abraham Shermerhorn, had made a substantial fortune in shipping, with a net worth of half a million dollars which would be equivalent to approximately $13.74 million today. Her mother, Helen Van Cortlandt, was part of the prominent Schirmerhorn family. Fate brought Caroline Schirmerhorn and William Astor Jr., the grandson of John Jacob Astor, together in marriage in 1853. An interesting historical note is that in 1862, they commissioned the construction of a stylish four-bay brownstone townhouse at 355th Avenue an address that would later become the site of the Empire State Building. Now, contrary to popular perception that she was always more focused on high society than family, Mrs. Astor, for a considerable part of her years as a mother of young children, devoted herself to her family and household management. Additionally, a hefty inheritance from her parents afforded her a level of financial independence uncharacteristic for women of her era. As the years passed, Caroline Astor's sphere of influence aptly known as the 400, emerged as a cornerstone of New York's Gilded Age society. You see, the city's population had swelled dramatically post-Civil War, 
with wealthy migrants and immigrants challenging the traditional stronghold of the New York elite. Teaming up with the revered social arbitrator Ward McAllister, Samuel Cutler Ward, who had joined the Astor clan through marriage, Mrs. Astor began to shape the rules of decorum and select the acceptable newcomers to their esteemed circles. In the Gilded Age of New York, Ward McAllister famously claimed that only 400 could truly qualify as fashionable society members. Caroline Astor, known as the Queen of Society, solidified her exclusive circle with an annual January ball. Scoring an invitation was the ultimate accolade, confirming one's place in New York's glittering elite. Caroline Astor was renowned for impeccable grace, discretion, and avoiding controversy. Her social sphere was rigid, an unassailable bastion of old money, unwavering in changing times. But the Astor's fame reached far beyond their shores, drawing the elite to their lives, grandeur and scandals. One such scandal was the affair of Lady Caroline's attire, her sumptuous gowns, adorned with green silk velvet and ostentatious ostrich feathers, raised suspicions of luxury duty evasion. In the end, her gowns were auctioned, making headlines worldwide. The Astors deftly controlled public opinion by portraying themselves as old money and viewing the Vanderbilts, who were known for their new fortune, with suspicion. The Astors gradually recognized the Vanderbilt's supremacy, upholding the exclusivity of New York's elite society. Three notable women, Marion Graves Fish, Teresa Fair Ulrichs, and Alva Bellant, were crowned queens of New York society after Caroling Astor's death. John Jacob Astor IV, a successful businessman, author, and military officer, unfortunately died in the sinking of the Titanic, leaving behind an inheritance worth about $87 million, or $2.64 billion in today's dollars. On the other side of the pond, the Astor lineage grew nobler, cultivating its prestige through illustrious titles, Six Count Astor and Baron Astor of Hever. William Waldorf Astor, a wealthy American Astor, transplanted himself to British soil in 1891, adopting British citizenship in 1899. His contributions to wartime charities earned him a baronage in 1916 and elevation to a viscount a year later, intertwining the Astors with British nobility. In 1956, another title, Baron Astor of Hever, was fashioned within the peerage of the United Kingdom, awarded to John Jacob Astor, the fourth, an influential newspaper baron and conservative politician, continuing the family's connection to British aristocracy. Today, certain Astor descendants, such as William Astor, 4th Viscount Astor, persist in wielding their influence, notably in the British House of Lords. However, over time, the family fortune eroded and some heirs faced monetary hardships. One poignant symbol of this decline is the family's 420-acre estate, showing signs of neglect due to insufficient maintenance funds. The Astor name, once synonymous with America's affluent upper echelons, has faced a gradual diminution in its prestige. While their venerated status has taken a quiet retreat, their mark on New York City's panorama and the American milieu remains indelible. The cityscape is peppered with edifices bearing the Astor insignia, including streets, buildings, companies, and institutions like the modern St. Regis Hotel and the Astor. Various landmarks echo their erstwhile glory. Therefore, the Astor family's evolution from new money to old money serves as a potent reminder of the importance of diversification and the transience of time and success. No matter what heights of success you reach, the name Astor will always hold weight in the Western world. And that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments section.